Josh and Mikey, I gotta be honest with you, you totally sold me here on the Wombat 3 because this disc is absolutely incredible. Oh, oh, come on, it? Mikey. Is that it? Oh. But for the sake of filming and being in the woods, y'all, this disc is not an ideal color to find in nature because, yeah, it's pretty much everywhere in nature. So if you got an eye out for Champion Wombat 3s, let a brother know, cause uh, I know a guy that wants to know a guy on where to find this beautiful disc that's not dead leaf color. What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. Today we are out at Greg Carter Memorial Disc Golf Course and we're gonna be addressing a common issue that happens within the disc golf world and something that I think frustrates, honestly, a ton of players. And that is the ability to hit lines or to throw the disc accurately. Like for real, how are we supposed to aim these Frisbees? There are few things in disc golf as frustrating as not being able to hit your line. Maybe doinking like four putts in a row that could also be frustrating. So I wanna give you a few tips I believe you can use to start hitting those lines more accurately today. The first tip I wanna give when it comes to accuracy is focusing on your release point. So often when people try to throw the disc, it's like they're reaching out and willing it to that point rather than trusting that their form is going to throw the disc where they want it to when you line your body up correctly. If we were throwing into a wide open field trying to throw to a general area, we would have a very natural throw. Yet when we find ourselves in the woods, we almost change how we throw the disc because we want to try to get it to this specific point on a specific line. This different throw from our normal throw is always going to hurt our accuracy while we're on the course. Where you release the disc is pivotal not only for accuracy, but honestly power as well. I see tons of people trying to release the disc all the way out here in front of them, and this is going to create some massive variance in where the disc is going to go. Often you can release it a little late and you're gonna pull it to the right, or you release it early and it shoots off to the left. All of these are gonna be for right-handed people, for the even better individuals who are left-handed, yeah, it's gonna be flip-flopped. The big thing to think about though is that we actually want to release the disc about right here at 10 o'clock or right here at two o'clock for left-handed people. When I say all this, I want you to imagine there's a clock right here and with this clock, you are in the dead middle of it and the positions that I'm talking about are an overhead view of where you want to actually release the disc. Now you might be looking at me saying, Robbie, if I release it at 10 o'clock, it's definitely going to go out early, but haha, -ha, physics is on our side. When you release the disc at 10 o'clock, you'll notice that my hand is on the front side of the disc, which means it's going to snap around the disc, and when I follow through, it's going to pull the disc on that straight line that I'm looking for. Focusing on lighting my body up and following through and hitting that 10 o'clock release point allows me to massively lower the variance of where the disc is going to go and allow me to throw the disc a lot straighter, a lot faster. But that also brings up two little nuances that I wanna talk about real fast. The first is disc selection. Depending on what your natural release angle is, whether that be flat, hyzer, and hyzer, disc selection is going to have a massive impact on how how accurate you can throw, even if you're nailing that 10 o'clock release point. I want you to refer to this list right here when it comes to your natural release style versus what types of discs you should be throwing if you want to throw straight. But I want to give a quick reasoning on why all of the touring pros seem to lean towards understable discs in straight and accurate shots. The easiest way to gain accuracy is to make sure that your throw is as consistent as possible, like we've been talking about literally this whole video. When we get to the woods, especially on straighter, longer shots, we don't want to be spending a ton of energy to power the disc, we're trying to just like, oh baby, time to crush it! We wanna keep the throw as smooth and consistent as possible. When throwing understable discs on a hyzer, it's fighting itself in this weird world of you threw it in a way that makes it wanna go this way, but naturally the disc wants to go this way. It's only going to flip up to flat and go straight. Putting the disc on this internal battle is going to naturally give it some extra distance and a very straight flight. The second nuance to the 10 o'clock release point helping you find accuracy is understanding when to accelerate during your throw. There are tons of players that get the disc all the way back here because they've been told that a super long reach back is how you generate power. We reach the disc all the way back here, all of our weight is back here, and the only way to get the disc to come forward is a pull of the arm and a falling forward motion, which is a very quick way for the disc to go boop 
and pop nose up, which is going to cause the disc to be more overstable. And it also means that those understable discs we chose aren't going to be as understable because we're throwing them nose up. All of our speed, power, and energy should be injected into the disc right here. The rest of the throw is just our body kind of naturally cooling down and letting the gas fall out as we follow through the rest of the shot. We don't want to come through and have our disc start trying to throw as hard and fast as possible from all the way back here because we're never going to have enough energy still left in the disc to actually inject anything once we get to this point. Much less if we were trying to throw out in front of us, not even at 10 o'clock, which is a couple clicks back from where most people find themselves actually throwing. Now, one of my favorite tools to help train me in this is my flight towel. I like the flight towel because the fob actually lets me feel like I still have a disc in my hand, but the towel has some built-in resistance so that I'm not just aimlessly flopping a towel around. But if we're balling on a budget, and I totally respect that, you can just use a normal kitchen towel or hand towel as well. I would just be careful putting in a ton of reps on it, once again, because you don't have that resistance. Now, what I don't want you to do when you're doing this drill is to think about trying to snap the towel, because when we focus on snapping the towel, it causes us to stop right here and stop following through. We can quickly do this motion of boop, and you're going to destroy pretty much everything in this whole half of your body when you do that. But thinking about moving slow, 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 accelerate right here, and then follow through. The other beauty of the fly towel is that when you're sitting at home, you can grab your fly towel and do this motion and get some training in even during commercial breaks. Now those tips are a lot of physical advice, which is going to take some time to retrain and sort of refocus your body to actually gain that distance. So I wanna give you two quick mental tips you can use to start gaining more accuracy today. The first is visualizing your line. When you're standing on the tee box, I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to envision what kind of flight you want the disc to take to get to your your desired landing area. When you're throwing those hyzer or curved shots, I want you to imagine how wide you want the disc to swing and see that line. I want you to imagine lining your body up and hitting that 10 o'clock release point, going down the line and just sliding it almost as if it's a cart on a roller coaster, just woo! all the way to your desired landing area. For hyzer flips, you're causing that internal battle to occur within the disc, so you're trying to aim a hyzer flip basically dead at your target. You don't want to allow a lot of variance left or right when throwing that hyzer flip shot, because when you throw it well, it's going to not have a ton of sway one way or the other, unless you put it too high, and then it's probably gonna fade out and finish a little off of the line you intended. And that's okay too, if you account for it. The third and final tip I'm actually not going to cover in this video, because I did it in a previous video on tee box geometry. How you line up and move on the box can have a massive influence on how accurate you're going to throw the disc before you even release it out of your hands. With all that said, I hope this video helps and I hope that you find a little more accuracy while on the course. I don't want people being frustrated because they feel like, man, I just can't get these frisbees to go anywhere I want them to go. And that's a bummer, y'all. As always, I want to say thank you for watching and thank you for tuning into the channel. My goal is to help you in any way I possibly can while trying to keep this video entertaining at the same time. I hope you have an amazing rest of the week and that you hit every line you could possibly dream of. But for now, I'm gonna leave you with the birdie.